Hello YouTube, we are back with another video. We're talking about autopiloting, obviously, as you can tell in the title. So there's good autopilot, there's bad autopilot, there's something in the middle. What does that all mean? Well, we're gonna start with this fantastic man, Dr. K. I'm sure you guys have heard of him. He's all over Twitch and YouTube. He's a psychiatrist from Harvard, I believe. Always streaming and helping people, gamers, helping us gamers with, you know, mental health issues or just fixing problems that they think need to be fixed or sometimes just tips, study tips from Dr. K, 2.5 GDP, yeah, whatever. So in this video, he talks about all sorts of things when it comes to motivation and whatnot. And one of the things he brings up is that, let's say you're trying to get a job, job rejection, you get rejected. Um, some people will just tell them I shouldn't have, tell themselves I shouldn't have bothered. You know, they get down on themselves. Another person just, just says, I should try again. You know, there's a lot of jobs out there. I'll get one eventually. So he asks his chat, which one would you want to do, blah, blah, blah. And the kind of consensus is that a lot of people are at this and someone says, you just need good self-discipline, force yourself to try again. And he says, although that's, you know, it's not a bad alternative, it wastes your brain's mana. And he uses the word mana on purpose because he's talking to gamers, obviously. But what he's talking about is that your brain can only do so much. Uh, it can only focus on so many things. It can only, you know, it can only do so, so much of what you don't want it to do or what you're trying to force it to do. So he says your goal shouldn't be to waste the mana because there's so many other things that you do throughout your day that waste mana. It should just be to get here right off the bat. This should, this should be your goal, not this. So keep that in mind. Sounds like I'm just talking about random shit, but I am, <laughs> but it's for a reason. So let's talk about something happened in Smash. Someone does something like rolling and you're very bad at punishing it. We're gonna use roll because I have two examples of roll. Let's say that there are three examples or three responses your brain has to the roll. You're fucking clueless. This is usually a new player. This is bad autopilot. Someone is doing something in front of your eyes and you barely realize. All you think about is I'm playing Sheik, I want to fare him again, or I can't wait to grab this guy with Mario and combo him. You know what I mean? Like that, this is bad autopilot right here. This is what not what you want. Here, you realize the roll you need to find out how to punish it. This is what people will tell you is like good Smash Bros. You're adapting mid set. You're really thinking about how to punish their stuff. And although it's a pretty good thing and it's it's a state you'll be in a lot of the times when you're a good player, but it's not the most optimal state because why? Figuring out the answer takes mana, right? When you're playing a fast paced game like Smash, there's so many things going on. The less focused your brain has to be on one particular punish or situation, the more you have to do other things. So the optimal situation four, right? You just know, you know that they roll instantly four. Two plus two equals four, right? I hope that kind of makes sense. So when someone rolls four, I know the answer right away. I know the answer. I do not have to think about the roll. This is good autopilot because you have realized what some, you realize the situation and you no longer have to think about it. Your brain immediately tells you four. What the fuck does that mean? Well, Mars video. Mars, very smart guy. We've um, analyzed him in the past. I just want you to watch this really quick. The hero rolled from the ledge, right? We, I don't know if you guys saw that, but believe me, we're gonna we're gonna go back to it anyway. Literally five seconds later, I pressed forward. He turned around. The hero was at the ledge, not literally the ledge, but cornered, right? Back to the off stage. Mars is already mid animation of turning around before this guy's roll even passed him. And you might tell me that Mikey, Michael, I was about to say my full name, Mikey D. Luffy. That's not autopilot. What does that do with autopilot? He's adapting mid set. He is for sure. He is adapting mid set, but he's using no mana. He's his adaptation is autopiloted. How do I know this? Let's use the volume this time. All right. Let's, oh, let's I met him right at the apex. I'm so sick of roll get up bull, dude. All right, he's so sick of roll get up bull. Me too, Max. Me too. I hate rolls. So. He's saying that he doesn't dislikes when someone's rolling from the ledge. I think in his brain, it's more saying that this guy rolls from the ledge a lot. Maybe not even from the ledge. This guy rolls on his backs to the right. backs to the wall you, kind of thing. Got right? No more MP, so I'm not worried about your menu. What is you it? We're just okay. All right, so now we know it's gonna happen again. Let's see if he's consciously adapting. Okay. When heroes start pulling out their menu, even though they have nothing, that's how you know they're just. He's talking to his chat about Hero's menu. Like this has nothing to do with adapting, right? He already knows the answer. He spent approximately zero mana on the adaptation. He autopiloted the next punish. When, when this guy's here, he's talking about Hero's role, but in his big ass brain up here, 
It's sending a messages. Turn around. He's about to roll. Right? He's not thinking about this. Heroes start he's clearly not thinking about it. He's talking about heroes menu. Out their menu even though they have right? This is a very, very good punish. Or a very um, good autopilot. He, he already knew the answer because he studied it in the past. Right? He didn't, he didn't autopilot like this. Shitty. He didn't have to figure out um, that this person rolls from this specific situation. He saw it once. His brain knew exactly what to do. When I was first thinking of this example... I, th I thought of Marth. Because in Smash 4, when Leo got good at Marth, um, people were talking about the matchup, and a lot of people would tell you that when he fares your shield, you can roll behind him, because a lot of Marths will kind of jump again, or they'll pressure your shield. And I wanted to find out if Leo adapts to this kind of thing, and it's the literal first video, MK Leo Marth, that I found. That's loud. Visit VG Bootcamp to see the whole set. It's one of the first situations that happens. He fares his shield, Link rolls. 17 seconds in. Now, do you think MK Leo has seen this before? Do you think people have rolled against them? Yes, 100%. So he noticed that this player does it, right? He, he jumps in a way that he's pressuring a fair, lands at the roll position with his fair. He didn't He didn't drift forward, he didn't drift backwards. All right, he drifted backwards because he knows this guy will roll when I leave the air to fair him. Watch it again, it happens one more time. This guy rolls. He goes for the punt. He already knows the answer. This time it's a grab. Obviously, he's a little too slow. But the idea here is that his brain already knows that this Link player has a habit. I already know how to punish it. Misexecuting is not a big deal, right? Like, everyone messes up sometimes. The idea is that you have to know the answer. That's the big deal. So, um, I hope you guys get what I'm saying here, right? So, let's say the issue here. Roll when... I... Fair his shield. S H shield. Hopefully that's fucking readable, right? So bad autopilot. You didn't even notice. You're just worried about roll. You're just worried about playing Marth. I'm having a blast. Oh, maybe I want to grab them soon, right? You, it did. It didn't even occur to you that this happened. To fix this, you need to go back and really watch your replays. I need to make a video on how to like really watch because I feel like people just watch the replay and they're like, oh, that was cool, so whatever. They don't think much. If you're playing Marth, you have to realize that fairing someone's shield is a good spot for you. They cannot punish you. You're at a very good distance. If you go back and watch your replay and see how many times you capitalize off a good situation like fairing someone's shield, if you notice it's low and they keep, you're not getting much out of it, figure out why find answers as to what you could have done better to get more out of that good situation now good play here um roll when i fairy shield you, you realize he he rolled right maybe you just realize he rolled but you don't really realize that it was because of the fair or maybe you don't know the answer to it or what you should do to bait out the roll again and you're kind of problem solving right he rolled what do i do next why did he roll was it because of my fair? Was it because he was back? Like, you don't really notice. Here. When I fair equals fast fall, turn around. Right? Like Leo did there. But the important thing about this is that this should also be autopiloted, right? So this is your brain. Things you're thinking about now. Things your brain just already knows. It's sending it up. You don't have to think about it. This is just... Oh, you saw the roll once. This was the kind of stimulus. Your brain instantly sends you the answer. You don't have to think about it. Hope you kind of get what I'm saying. I'm getting a little, I'm getting a little too. I've been watching maybe too much Doctor K because it's something he talks about too. Right? I'm, I'm using his. I use the waves and all that shit. I'm using, I'm using his stuff. I'm using his stuff. But I hope you get the point because it actually, it's a, a very big deal, right? There's just too much in a game of Smash for you to just constantly be trying to figure out answers on the fly. There's too much. There's, Daigo talks about this. Daigo from Street Fighter. I just say from like he's from the game. He's a playable character. The the player, the Street Fighter player, that I go in his book, and I'm pretty sure Armada made a video about this a while ago. And they both use the same example of tournament play is kind of like taking a test, in that you you can't find out all the answers. So right? like if you don't know an answer going to a test, you can't just figure it out mid test. Maybe like in some subjects you can, but you get the point, right? You need to study beforehand. The tournament is where you show that you know the answers. You cannot. Just figure out everything on the fly. There, some things you will have to figure out on the fly because your opponent is also very good. They're mixing things up. Now it's like a mental battle of and also rock, paper, scissors where there's a lot of guessing. But against a lot of mid-level players, even when you're a mid-level player yourself, 
you need to realize that there's too much things that you should already know the answer to and when you know it well enough you get to an autopilot um like a good autopilot where you just know something so well you know a situation so well you know a stimulus like Mar marth's fair and how people react to it and you already know the next step how to punish their reaction those kind of things there's a book i want to see if i have it be able to search it up wait it's actually right here oh the inner game of tennis um very good book i recommend you guys reading it i don't remember it off the top of my head i read this shit like three years ago so many smash players that are good have recommended this book and he talks about the author um kind of just being trusting yourself to just know how to do something well because you've practiced it right it's kind of what i've been saying but let's say in a tennis serve do you think someone who's on fire with their serves is thinking i need to get this perfect toss my shoulder needs to be loose i need to follow through no when you do that you miss every fucking serve when i used to play volleyball when i was on a hot streak serving it was just coming baby i was i was like there's a girl i liked in the stands i was thinking about her i'm just boom watch this clean perfect toss nice jump it's a nice serve and then you're in practice you're thinking about getting this perfect toss and it's going like left right you're thinking too much sometimes and it kind of stiffens you up it freezes you right have you ever been like paralyzing your own thought kind of thing your goal is to pass that we've been looking at a black screen might as well get a nice little background it's raining your goal is to get past that to a point where you naturally are just so good at what you do because you practice, right? This is the big thing. This isn't something you just learn overnight. You need to practice. You need to get very comfortable in situations that you just have become so in tune with a particular situation or a particular skill that you can do it without wasting your mana. Hope you get what I'm saying with that. There's a video that I want to make next. We're going to use Mars as an example again. I closed it because he's doing it in that video, actually. Um, and it's going to be kind of my big tip to improve how to get to that good autopilot as well as how to just learn about your own mistakes. Um, it's, it's a good tip, I think. It's how I got better at League. I used to be super hard stuck, like gold, and I kind of climbed to diamond. I stopped playing. <laughs> and then I played a new role and I hit that diamond as well. And I think the reason I was able to kind of break my plot, so maybe I should start doing this again whenever next game I play. Um, but yeah, I can't spoil it. It's my next video. Hope you guys learned something about autopiloting. I will see you next time.